the second half of the 19th century, Charles Darwin set out his theory of evolution. The greater overcome the lesser, the stronger displace the weaker, leading to the survival of the fittest. At roughly the same time, Jigoro Kano, the leading figure in martial arts, created Judo, in which the single most important principle is the achievement of the maximum of results with a minimum of effort. If you can learn to use the philosophy of Judo to your advantage, then you do not have to be the strongest to survive. Our film tells the stories of different people who have been helped to live their lives through Judo. Judo, the art of living. Part 1 If you fall seven times, get up eight times. Jigoro Kano 1996 Oleg Kretzel, a young and promising judoka from Moldavia, took part in the Atlanta Olympic Games. Although he was not amongst the medalists at those games, everyone agreed that he had a great future in the sport. His life was stretching ahead of him. He had a lovely girlfriend waiting for him at home. On his return to Kishinev, Oleg proposed, and on a sunny day in August, the young couple were married. Nine days later, Oleg's life would change forever. They were both involved in a terrible car crash, which left his young wife dead and Oleg completely blind. For about two years after the accident, I just didn't want to live, didn't want anything. I can't tell you how grateful I am to my friends. They even slept by my side and made sure I was never alone. Oleg's friends lived through this tragedy with him. They spent months in the hospital at his bedside. It was this support that gave Oleg the strength to carry on. Vitali Glikor, Oleg's best friend, is one of those who bore the brunt of those first years after the accident. Vitali remembers. When he was moved to the main wall, he had what looked like a cast round his head. That was because his upper jaw was fractured, and it had to be kept immobile so that it would mend. The doctor said that some patients with injuries that serious died just from the pain and shock. He was very badly injured. His face looked like it had been beaten to a pulp. He had no nose to speak of. He couldn't eat. He had no teeth left. He couldn't eat, let alone laugh. Nevertheless, we kept coming to visit him, to try and keep his spirits up. Oleg, we'd say, do you want some nut cake? You can guess how he reacted. What do you mean, cake? He couldn't open his mouth, couldn't laugh. But somehow his mood began to lighten. It took six months before Oleg was fit enough to leave hospital. This young, strong man had not only lost his sight completely, he had also lost his reason for living. Once again, his friends were there by his side, never leaving him even for a moment. After the accident, Oleg gave away his judogi, but he carried on turning up to training sessions with his friends. Initially, he would just sit on the bench, but then his friends started asking, why are you here? Get changed and work out with us. Oleg took the plunge and went out on the tatami. That was what gave him a sense of hope for the future. When we heard that there were competitions for the visually impaired, I saw the light come back into his eyes. Eyes that couldn't see anything, but still sparkled with a desire to compete, to get to the top in his chosen sport. Oleg began an intensive training program. His best friend, Vitali Gligor, became his trainer and started to study the system for training visually impaired athletes. It took Oleg 18 months to realize that he would be able to fight and take part in competitions again. And not only take part, but even to beat the strongest of adversaries. When we first took part in competitions, what surprised me was that they were not only for completely blind sportsmen, but for any visually impaired judoka. They all fought together. That gives some of the competitors a decided advantage. That said, it was a huge stimulus for him to beat someone who had even the remnants of sight. Having found a reason for living, he gave himself up entirely to judo and trained for days on end. His training paid dividends. Oleg Kretzel became European and world champion. There was one dream left, a Paralympic gold. 
But Oleg had yet more mountains to climb. 25 years ago, the Cascade Judo Club was founded in Sergeyev Posad, just outside Moscow. Over that time, the club has trained many champions and prize winners at Russian national and international level. The trainers of the Cascade Club are amongst the first in Russia to develop a methodology for working with preschool children. That was how their family and judo program began. The joint sessions for adults and young children help them to develop common interests, a sense of partnership and to strengthen the psychological bonds between family members. The children train on their own twice a week and on Saturdays their parents join them on the tatami. Very young children are accepted into the program and since lessons take the form of play, training sessions are full of fun, interest and discovery for athletes of all ages. I love the fact that once a week the lessons involve the parents, which gives me an additional opportunity to train with my son. It brings us into closer contact and helps us to understand each other better. I took part in a competition and I won some stripes for my belt. The belt I've got now is not just an ordinary belt, it's a bit yellow at the end. At the competition I did my best, but there were other boys ahead of me. But I try my very, very best. It's hard when you start thinking, what are you doing on the tatami at your age? You've got so much else going on, do you really need this as well? But it is important because this is where we can be together. Children and parents will always have issues. That's natural. But we can solve them more easily now, because we have a bond we didn't have before. The Cascade Club regularly holds children's sporting events, festivals and of course competitions. Each child receives a stripe for their belt after one of these events. It is a huge stimulus to try and win. But the competitions are organized so that the children get the maximum pleasure out of them and every child comes out of it feeling a champion. Kostas Efremidis had a difficult childhood. When he was five, he was diagnosed with a rare disease, Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Further research revealed that he would need an operation on his brain. I was only a very small boy when my parents learned of my illness. But, even so, I decided that I was big enough to fight this, and that everything was going to be all right. I was going to be a famous sportsman. The operation was successful, and they were able to save the child's life. But tests showed that he had secondary cancers in his lungs. He needed a course of chemotherapy. That was when Costas really grew up. He tried not to show his parents just how ill he was feeling. He coped with the pain heroically and set his sights on getting better. Even though the doctors were far from optimistic, Costas also had another dream. He wanted to take up judo. After the operation, the chemotherapy, and everything else that we'd been through, it was a hard decision to let my son take up judo. But we agreed, because we wanted to give our boy the chance of a new start in life. We consulted the doctors and all the specialists said that the only form of sport that would suit Konstantinos would be judo since the chances of being injured were relatively small. Costas' illness kept recurring and he underwent three courses of chemotherapy in all. The doctors warned his parents that Costas' hair would fall out, but no one expected it to happen so quickly. On his first day back at school after his treatment, Costas ran his hand through his hair and was amazed to find that he had unwittingly pulled out a whole handful. He made a joke of it as a way of getting out of an embarrassing situation. 
Naturally, his classmates laughed at him, and when Costas returned home after school, he was mortified. His parents took him to the hairdressers, and Costas had to have his head shaved. At school, he used to say, Hey guys, watch this. He would pull a handful of hair out. As if he were doing a magic trick. I can only imagine what my poor boy was going through and how hard it was for him to cope. Costas made new friends in the judo dojo. They did not laugh at him for having no hair, but immediately made him feel one of them. One of the boys was clearly impressed and said, You look like a real bodyguard. I was on the bench at the training session, watching the other boys train. And suddenly, I felt really bitter that I couldn't train with them. Vladimir, the trainer, came up to me and said, Young man, you've been sitting and watching us for ages. Maybe you'd like to have a go yourself. Of course I would, I said. I took my shoes off and went to join the session. That was where I met new friends. Judo really helped me overcome my inner fears and my weakness after my illness. That was the time when everybody was laughing at me at school because I was completely bald. Archpriest Piotr Lashuk, rector of the Church of St. Nicholas, lives in the small Ukrainian town of Beryovaska. A few years ago, when the town was faced with a dangerous situation, Father Piotr found himself returning to his childhood hobby. He got out his judogi and opened a judo dojo. When I was appointed to this parish, I learned that a semi-criminal organization, a vicious sect that is well known in Russia, had spread its tendrils to Berezovka and was expanding its network here. It was carrying out its activities under the pretense of running various children's clubs. Back then, there were no organized leisure activities for the children of Beryoavska, and then suddenly, a number of clubs had opened up. At first, the children were happy to join, but soon their parents started to worry about the children spending all their time at these clubs. The parents found out that their children were being used as unpaid workers and had been made to sign oaths in blood. The people of Beryoavska did not know whom to turn to, so they approached Father Piotr. None of them could have guessed the means Father Piotr would use to fight the leaders of this sect. It was a hard decision, but despite criticism, the priest decided to open a judo dojo next door to the church. So I took the plunge. I was dealing with children, and children need a bit of rough and tumble. I wouldn't know how to teach them sewing, or handicrafts, or ballroom dancing. But I'm a fighter myself, so I was prepared to take up the fight. I've been fighting a lot of years, and I love this sport. You know what they say, once a fighter, always a fighter. From his earliest childhood, Fernando Mahina devoted all his free time to judo. When he joined the police force, he kept up with his training schedule. He organized judo lessons for the police force of Seville. Fernando Mahina has won a number of international competitions. In addition to his sporting achievements, Fernando has also been decorated for his police work. In 2013, the Spanish Minister for the Interior awarded Fernando Mahina with a service medal, which he wears despite his illness. Fernando received one of his medals for saving the lives of the workers during a fire at a chemical warehouse. We rushed into the scorching heat to try and save as many people as we could. We were lucky. We managed to save 16 people from a horrible death. But after that, Two of my colleagues and I ended up in the hospital from smoke inhalation. We'd been poisoned by the fumes. Five years ago, fate altered the course of the life of this strong, brave man. 
When he was on his honeymoon, Fernando first sent some strange changes in his body. When he returned home, he was told of the terrible diagnosis, which he found hard to believe. The neurologist who was treating Fernando did not mince his words when he told him his test results. He told me straight out, without sparing my feelings, that in two years, I'd be confined to a wheelchair, and in five years, I'd be dead. He had only just got married and assumed that his whole life lay ahead of him. He had so many plans, so much he wanted to achieve. You always think your life is going to be normal, like everyone else's. And then like a bolt out of the blue, there's this disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, that no one's ever heard of. Which means that Fernando's life has turned out to be very different from other people's. His health grew progressively worse. Fernando continued with his police work while he was having treatment. He hid his weakness from even his closest friends and tried to carry on as before. But he found it more and more difficult to go out on patrol. Eventually, he had to give up any work that involved physical exertion. When Fernando started to struggle with his duties, we decided to move him to another post and find him a desk job in the Statistics Bureau, which is where he is still working now. Miriam fell in love with Fernando when she was just a girl. They went out for many years before getting married. Fernando was always a ladies' man, and he and Miriam split up on a number of occasions, only to get together again when they understood that they needed each other. And finally, Fernando, who valued his freedom more than anything, realized that he wanted to spend the rest of his life with Miriam and proposed. It was only a short time before the clouds of fate started to gather over their life together, but it is their love that helps them overcome all the difficulties they face today. My family, Miriam and Luna, are the support that keeps me going. Without Miriam, I couldn't keep living with the weight of everything that I've been landed with. I don't know what I'd do without her. She's the driving force behind my life. After the doctors had diagnosed Fernando's illness, the couple decided they wanted to try for a baby. Miriam knew just how hard it would be for her after the baby was born. But love has to have a continuation in this life, and so their daughter Luna was born. That was the greatest gift for Fernando. Luna seemed to understand about her father's illness from the moment she was born. Fernando couldn't change her nappy or feed her. When she grew a little older, even though nobody explained his illness to her, Luna started to adapt to it and look for things that he could do with her. She knows exactly what I can do and what her father can do. <laughs>
Part 2 The character Ju signifies flexibility in selecting the means of achieving victory. Du generally translates as Wei. Jigoro Kano intended his martial art to be not only a method of defeating an opponent, but also a means of overcoming one's own inner weakness in any situation in life. The parents and other inhabitants of Beriovaska supported Father Pyotr in his difficult initiative. The people got together to renovate a small room. The local school donated some old mats. They made their own equipment and opened their dojo. The tiny room could not accommodate everyone who wanted to join, and Father Pyotr held three training sessions a day. Eventually, almost all the children in Beriovaska came to the dojo. It is now more than 10 years since the dojo was opened. Father Pyotr's first students are now grown up and help him to teach new generations of judokas in Beriovaska. I never tried to use judo as a means of luring children into church. I'd have felt, I don't know, how can I put it? You can receive financial dividends, but you can do it like that sect that had come to our region. They got their dividends in the form of cheap labor or adherence. I've always followed the principle that if children like me, then they'll like the things that I like. Don't you think? If they want to, they'll come of their own accord. The Spanish judo community has rallied behind Fernando Mahina's fight against his illness. David Samora, Fernando's friend and fellow judoka, offered to arrange a tournament and called it the Mahina Showdown. Miriam Blasco, the first Spanish woman to have won an Olympic gold for judo, visited the tournament. When I visited the Mahina Showdown, I was amazed how the judo world had united behind this man's story. The first year, hardly anyone had heard about the tournament. Alberto Contador, the famous Spanish cyclist, really helped by publicizing it and talking about the tournament on television and in the mass media. After that, everyone saw the judo world uniting against this illness in order to support one of its own. At a real low point in my life, when I felt completely alone, my friend said, We're all judoka. This battle is the longest and the hardest of your life, but we'll support you in it. This is a real battle, but the true friendships and support are more than I have ever experienced. Not every sport could give you this. Judo is so much more than just a sport. After the first tournament, someone had the idea of using judo as a means of spreading the word about amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. That was how the Mohina Showdown developed into an annual international event. The funds raised at the tournament were ploughed into ALS research. With the help of his friends, Fernando Mahina had started to fight this illness and his example has inspired many other people. Before and after a showdown, you are two different people. He is our hero and a hero for many people. Fernando Mohina was already seriously ill when the Spanish Judo Federation awarded him an honorary sixth dan for his contribution to judo. While we were filming, Fernando asked his wife Miriam to help him put on his judogi for the first time in five years. He had never put on this belt before. For the first time in many years, he went down to the tatami and despite the fact that Fernando finds it physically very hard to stand, he was the happiest of men with his friends that day. This is a very moving experience. I've been ill for five years now. And this is the first time I've put on my judogi with my sixth dan belt, which is one of the most important awards. And now...
that I'm back. Back on the tatami. Where I once... I feel such... It's everything. Every summer, Cascade Club members, both parents and children, head off for camp. Sometimes, outsiders express their surprise. Why would anyone want to spend their hard-earned leave on a sports camp when there are so many places they could go? But the families who take part are more than convinced that this has helped them to bond as a family. Hard-fought training sessions with parents and friends form the qualities in children that will help them to be successful in any situation in life. One of the parents said, Yuri, if anyone had told me that 10 days at camp could change me, change my son, and most importantly, change our relationship, I'd have never have believed it. But it's happened. It was during the summer camp that the parents asked trainer Yuri Krishuk to set up an adult group for them. People who had never had any experience of judo before wanted to start training when they saw what it did for their children. That was how the Cascade Club came to open another section, which gave parents the opportunity to take up a new and interesting hobby. I didn't see anything particular in it. To start with, I just came, gave them various tasks to complete, but their desire to study judo, to develop their skills and to learn more about judo, fired me to take their training sessions and their attitude to judo seriously. Now I plan every training session and every lesson. I write up training plans and we all develop step by step. We progress, we take exams, we invite specialists to assess us. We take it all very seriously. Despite their busy lifestyles, people of all different ages and professions find the time to come to the evening training sessions. This gives them not just the opportunity to meet other people and keep fit, but also set themselves new targets to aim for. Many have already been through the assessment process, passed their exams and been awarded their first belt. I've got my orange belt. I'm going for the assessment for my green belt at the end of the year. We're training hard, I enjoy it. It's a really intellectual way of keeping physically active. A lot of men had already done it and were going for the next level. I decided to give it a go. My husband said, you need to set our son a good example by getting it. He'll be going for his belt next year. And he needs to see what his mother can achieve by training hard. She may have started later than he did, but she can still do it. These parents have discovered the world of judo thanks to their children and now they are showing them that all great journeys start with small victories. Judo has become the common factor that unites their family. I discovered judo through my grandson. His parents, my son, decided to sign him up for the judo club. Our club has a parent day on Saturdays, when our trainer Olga holds joint sessions for the children and the adults. My son asked me to go along with my grandson, so I agreed. We went along together for a while, and then I found out, to my surprise, that there were a group for adults with special talents. That was how I came to join in. For me, judo is principally a means of gaining an upper hand, an upper hand over oneself. Oleg Kritzel puts everything into his preparation for the 2004 Paralympic Games in Athens. 
He dreamed of winning gold, and as one of the best judoka in the world, Oleg deserved it. The previous three years, he hadn't lost a single bout. He hadn't even lost a single point. None of his bouts went the full length. That shows he really was head and shoulders above the competition. And that's what motivated him. At the Athens Paralympic Games, Oleg was all set to win gold. He won bout after bout with impressive throws, and then came the final. His opponent was the Algerian judoka Mesouad Nine, a strong competitor, but one that Oleg had already beaten at the World Games in Canada. The cherished Olympic gold was nearly in Oleg's grasp. That was when his confidence ballooned into overconfidence. It was his overconfidence that cost him that gold medal. He took second place, losing to the Algerian. It was the toughest blow he'd had to face since the accident. Only complete concentration during a bout and the correct assessment of an opponent's strengths can bring victory. After all his winning fights, Oleg Kretzel still needed to learn that lesson. I was about to go out, and I went up to Vitaly and said, I'll make you a present of this. That was my mistake. In all my previous bouts, I just went out onto the tatami, and I never said anything like that before the fight. I'll make you a present of this. The fates punished me for that. When I lost that final, I ended up in second, and my opponent had the gold. It took me a couple of months before I could get over it. After his defeat, and that was how he regarded his silver medal at the Athens Paralympics, Oleg started all over again. Ahead lay another four years of daily training sessions. Whenever he lost, he was never defeated. He always got up and tried not just to fix his mistake, but to reach heights that he hadn't managed to get to the first time. You can't know how to get to your feet if you've never been knocked down in the first place. Fate has seen to it that Oleg has had to trip and fall many times. But every time he's got up and stood tall afterwards, that is the core of his being. It's what brought him to judo in the first place. The Beijing Paralympic Games. Having learned from his past mistakes, Kretzel was ready to go for gold. He was in perfect physical shape. He was calm, and he and his trainer had devised a new fight tactic. Nothing was going to get in the way of his victory. But on his way to the final, he faced a new test, and this time fate would require a huge degree of self-mastery from him. The final was set for the 9th of September, a fateful day for Oleg. 9th of September, 11 years previously, was the date when he had been involved in his terrible accident. September 9th, 2008. It was September 9th that I had my accident. Exactly 11 years previously. When I was weighed on the 9th, I came in at exactly 90 kilos. I went out and fought and reached the final. The final was set for 4 p.m. It was around 4 p.m. that the accident took place. 4, 4.30. And I was due to fight in the final at that time. To get to the final, I had to beat the Algerian, the one I lost to in 2004 in Athens. When I went out, I said nothing to Vitaly. Deep down, I was saying to myself, I have to get through this and everything seemed to go okay. Everything Vitaly and I had discussed, all the tactics we'd planned, just seemed to work. I won cleanly. It was a great feeling. All my friends came up to me and lifted me up. It was wonderful. 
They threw me up in the air. Those five seconds seemed to last three or four minutes. I was in seventh heaven. There's no words to express what I felt. No words. On the 9th of September 2008, Oleg Kretzel won Paralympic gold. Exactly 11 years had passed since his accident. As he said to his trainer and friend, I've got even with fate today. It was friendship, persistence and inner strength that helped Oleg become Paralympic champion. It was one of the happiest moments in the lives of both Oleg Kretzel and Vitali Gligor. Oleg's family were waiting for him back at home. Oleg had found personal happiness in life as well. A few years previously, he had fallen in love again and his wife Oksana had given him a son and a daughter. If I know anything at all, it is that however difficult things may be in my life, I can rely on the strength of my husband because I am sure that he will always be there to support me. I know what true happiness is because I have two lovely children, a loving husband and close-knit family. Today, Kostas has won many national and international competitions. At the Greek national championships, Kostas Efremidis won gold. From a weak boy, worn out by his medical treatment, he has grown into a confident young man. He has learned to win on the tatami and stand up to fate. When his body learned to believe in its own strength, the illness gave ground. After the first course of chemotherapy, I felt very weak and very unsure of myself. That was why I wanted to take up judo. It was judo that helped me to turn things around. From a small boy who knew nothing, I grew into a young man who knows how to survive both when I am with friends and when I am alone. I know how to control my body and my spirit. Judo has completely changed my life. It has really helped me. Apart from the physical strength, I have also gained a number of good friends who have helped me. The town of Katerini, where Kostas's family lives, sits at the foot of Mount Olympus. When Kostas was a child, his father trained him to make the ascent. Now Kostas acts as a guide up the mountain paths. In their free time, both father and son love climbing to the top of Mount Olympus. Kostas surely dreams of Olympic gold at these moments. Maybe with his desire for victory, that dream will come true. We can hardly believe how many medals he's won. His classmates and teachers have come to respect him. We look at our boy, who has been through so much and has to overcome his inner weakness every day. Both back then, when his health was bad, and now, he is completely dedicated and does his utmost in everything. Following their brother's example, Costas's sisters asked their parents if they could also join the judo dojo. Lena and Despina have already won their first prizes. It is not clear what sporting heights these young girls will reach, but it is clear that they will grow up steadfast, focused, and self-confident. The heroes of our film have refused to give in, despite seemingly insuperable odds. We hope their experiences will help others who follow after them and choose judo as their guiding light in the art of living.